Good morning. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm Mrs. Michelle from Sacramento First Church of the Nazarene, and we learned last time about the story Jesus told of the prodigal son and God's love for everyone. Today, we're going to hear about Jesus' ascent back up to heaven. Um, let's see, you know, we know a lot about the big events in Jesus's life, right? If you think about it, we know about his birth. We celebrate that as Christmas and his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, and how he knew that one of his disciples would turn against him. And he announced that at the Last Supper to all of his apostles, um, where he also gave us communion. Uh, let's see. We also know that Jesus was crucified and he saved our souls, which we call Good Friday and his resurrection, which is Easter Sunday. But now let's see how Jesus prepared for his ascension back to heaven. Jesus led his disciples to a mountaintop above Jerusalem. He gave them instructions on what to do once he was gone. I'm thinking they were probably scared. This is... You know, they, they knew who he was. This is the son of God. This is the king of all kings who came here to save us. And now he's leaving. And I, I would bet that, that his disciples were really concerned, that they were worried about what was going on. Um, and even though they knew that this was all in God's plan, Jesus knew he had to go back to heaven. So I still think that they might have had some issues, maybe feeling worried that they didn't know what they were going to do next or how they were going to continue his teachings. Um, so let's see how Jesus took care of that. So they were to wait. Remember, Jesus is telling them on this mountaintop what to do after he's gone. They are to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit and then spread the good news of Jesus and make many disciples. Those are followers of Jesus. Uh, he also said to baptize the new disciples in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have done whole lessons on baptism, and you guys remember, I know, uh, how important that is. That Jesus, it's one of the last things he says before he goes back up to heaven, that not only to spread the good news about Jesus, tell them all about the kingdom of God, tell everybody about it, make new disciples, make new believers, new followers of Jesus, but also to be sure to baptize them. I love the sign for baptism. It shows pe two people and them being dunked in the water. So baptism, excuse me, I have hiccups. Um, to baptize the new believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love that. So we will again visit that baptism. I really, I think it's so important and I want the families to know, I think it'd be fun to do family baptism. So we can do a class with the family, with the kids and um, their caregivers, whether it's grandma, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, uh, to go ahead and do a class all together and then get baptized together as a family. I think that would be fantastic. Now, remember, the message that Jesus wants his disciples to spread could not be taken to the people without God's power, right? We know that we need God's hand in everything we do. So it was important for the apostles to obey Jesus' instructions and wait for the Holy Spirit. God was going to send his Holy Spirit to give them his power and take the message to all people. I love this. I love this message. Then after Jesus ascends into heaven, you know, he gives them their instructions. The apostles are standing there and then he just rises up, just rises up into heaven. Then two angels appeared and told the disciples that Jesus went to heaven and he will return one day the same way he left. So those disciples absolutely went to Jerusalem and followed Jesus' instructions and waited for the Holy Spirit to come and be with them and then told everyone about Jesus. Did you know that we are followers of Jesus and we too should be making disciples, right? We need to also have other people know about God's love, what he did for us, him sending his son here for us, what Jesus did for us while he was here. This is our job as Christians, not just to go to church on Sunday, not just to watch kids video with Mrs. Michelle, but to make new disciples. It's very important. This is why it is so important that we live Christian lives outside of church, not just in church, so that others can see the love and the good that Jesus has put in our hearts. Remember, although Jesus was returning to heaven, he was not abandoning his apostles. God never leaves or abandons his children. 
If we ever feel sad, alone, or confused, we have the entire book of the Bible to help guide us and instruct us on how we can live our lives while we're waiting for Jesus to return until he comes back to take us with him to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I love this. I love this lesson. It's a good one. And we've got a fun little craft to follow. I hope you guys enjoy doing that today. It's a it's a little hanging. I, I think it should be outside. I think it's beautiful. And we get to see Jesus ascend when we make this little craft. And then as you know, those of you who follow, we have a nice little animated cartoon ver version of this Bible story. I hope you stay tuned for that as well. Have a blessed day and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. This is the fun little hanging craft that we're going to do today that shows Jesus' ascension into heaven. And so it's really simple. We're using, again, our household um, goodies that we've got lying around. This is just some paper. You know, I love to recycle. This is some used paper. I'm using the other side of it. And we're just showing our bit of heaven up here that says Jesus lives. I used an old ribbon to connect it. You can use string, you can use yarn, whatever you've got on hand. And then, of course, we made our Jesus here. And what I love about this is if you put a knot at the top so that this stops here when you're hanging it, you can also, you'll watch me pull this, and you can see Jesus ascend into heaven. So this is what we're making. I used a little Dixie cup that was already blue to help me with my sky. And as you can see, I just took some cotton balls. I'm gonna put one more on here to make it balanced. And I just took some double stick tape. I thought that'd be easier to just roll the tape. And I just sort of shaped my little cloud, made it kind of look a little puffy. And I'm gonna put this cloud right here. And I just pushed on that. So I've got clouds all around my cup, as you can see. And then this was really simple. I'm just gonna show you this. You can pause it here. You can see I just did a nice little cloud the sun with some rays shining and you know my trick for cutting out I don't like to try to cut out too detailed I cut nice and big around so it's easy for our little ones to cut and then I just taped on the back again my ribbon I looped it so you can hang it it's even kind of fun I think to hang outside in this beautiful weather so that you can see our Jesus ascending craft and as I said, if you kind of pull it, I have a knot here at the top so that it stays it that way or my little cup doesn't slide too far up. But I can pull it and you can see Jesus ascending into heaven with his little gold sash. So we're going to make that today. You Again, I just used a little blue Dixie cup. If you have a paper cup, you can do it and color it blue. I also thought uh, this little empty yogurt cup, I like to recycle these yogurt cups. You can punch a little hole in that and use that. So again, the only tricky part of today really is getting your little Jesus drawn and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's very, very simple for you um, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, and moms and dads helping the little ones out. We're gonna just start with a circle for his face and you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. We're doing pencil, we can always erase and a lot of this will get hidden by his hair anyway. And to make his robe, it's, I'm not gonna draw in the face, but I'm gonna kind of start here and do what looks like a triangle, like I'm gonna start a triangle, and that gives me his arms to start his robe. And then I'm just gonna give him some sleeves. We're gonna pull that in there, make it kind of flowy, and then we'll give him the rest of his robe here. Super simple shapes. I'm gonna give him some little shoes just the little tips of his shoes. I call these mitten hands. They're really easy to draw, especially for our, our younger kids here at Kids Connection. We'll give them little mitten hands. And then the face, you might think, oh my gosh, I can't draw this face. It's so simple. Take a look at my example here. Really, all we did was hair and eyes. The beard takes care of the rest for us. And so it's really nice and easy. I'm gonna give him some bangs to start us off, give him some very kind eyes because we know Jesus was so kind and loving to everyone. And then to take care of the rest of the face, we're just gonna start with his beard, 
So we're going to give him the mustache up top. And then we're going to kind of keep going with the beard down here. And his hair will come down. And so we'll make his beard come up like just like it would up to meet his his hair, like up to where his ear is. And so see, he's over here. We got him smiling for us. See that? That takes care of the face, just the beard and the little eye dots. Really, really simple. And now his hair, he had that lovely, wavy, beautiful hair. So we're going to bring the hair down. And then we're just going to close it off here where we started his hair. I'm just going to erase where we made the circle to make his head shape. Just so that it looks nice and tidy. And then all we have left to do is his sash. See our lovely golden sash here? And so I'm going to start at the top, kind of close to his beard, and come to this top part of his sleeve. And then I'll come down lower on this sleeve and just wrap that down here for his sash. And I'll even make some little wavy lines. You can see the fabric is gathered here nicely. That is it. That is so simple. And as you know, I don't cut closely into everything. If you look again here at the one I did earlier... I just cut loosely around him, the shape. And so easy breezy, lemon squeezy, super easy but fun craft. I love this one. Let me lie it down so you can see the whole thing again. This is just our craft showing our ascension of Jesus into heaven. And we know that he is with us always. So here he is going back into heaven. And again, you can have the little ones pull on the string and they can see Jesus ascend. So, I hope you enjoyed this craft. I thought it was a fun one to come up with. Super easy. If you don't have little Dixie cups, you can use a paper cup. Again, you can use a little yogurt cup and take a blue Sharpie and color that blue. You can even color it blue and just draw the clouds on this one. I hope you enjoyed our craft and our story to get day. Be blessed and I'll see you next Into the Clouds it was time for Jesus to go to heaven. He led his disciples to the top of a mountain near Jerusalem. Here's what I want you to do, he said. Wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promised Holy Spirit. Then tell everyone about me. Go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and then to the rest of the world. Oh. Make many disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything you learned from me. I will always be with you. When he had said this, Jesus rose into the sky. Up he went until he disappeared into a cloud. His disciples watched him. They stood there, staring into the sky. <laughs> Two men dressed in white appeared. Jesus has gone to heaven, they explained. He will come back in the same way. So the disciples obeyed Jesus and went to Jerusalem. Hmm?